Hi everyone, I'm Law of the West, and welcome back to another episode of my Ongoing Versus series. If you're not familiar with it, this is where I take two ships that were designed to perform the same job, but go about doing it in very different ways. And I compare them in terms of how their various abilities and features match up against one another. This was all done to help players make the best choice that they can based on what their gameplay style tends to gravitate towards. And in this episode, I'm going to be comparing what my top two recommendations are when people ask what starter ship they should get. And those ships are the Avenger Titan and the Drake Cutter. One thing that I wanted to address about this matchup is, if you looked at these ships in terms of their raw stats, then this wouldn't end up being much of a competition. But this comparison isn't going to be about which ship is better at combat. It's going to be about which one gives you the best value for the features that it has. And for years now, the Avenger Titan has been my recommendation as being the best ship that a new player could get. And that wasn't until the Cutter came out. And that's because the Cutter represents one of the best alternatives to the Titan that caters to a very different type of playstyle. And so now I finally have a contender to give the Titan a run for its money, and I'm going to be comparing these two and see how they match up in terms of cost, features, and what their money earning potential is for new players, as well as going over what their individual strengths and weaknesses are. Let's start things off by taking a look at the Titan. And I want to address the elephant in the room right from the start, which is, the Avenger Titan is not officially recognized as being a starter ship. But as far as I'm concerned, it's always been Aegis's contribution to the starter ship category. The Titan definitely qualifies with regards to its price, and it does come bundled along with a game package and the pledge store just like the other starter ships do. The Titan is the cargo hauling variant in the Avenger series. The main difference between it and the other models is that the Titan's had its rear module converted into a cargo bay that has one large maglock built into the floor. And this allows you to be able to haul 8 SCUs of cargo or a small vehicle. To put it into perspective, 8 SCUs is a good amount of storage space for a starter ship to have, and its hauling capacity is double what the cutter can normally carry. Its cargo bay is also just big enough for you to be able to transport some of the smaller vehicles, like for instance any of the grav labs including a Nox, a Dragonfly, the X-1, and a Pulse. You can also carry several of the small ground vehicles like the STV, a Ranger, or several PTVs. The Avenger Titan has a few more advantages over the cutter in terms of its performance, its weapons, and its components loadout. When it comes to performance, the Titan is faster than the cutter in terms of its pitch yaw and roll speeds, and it has a faster top speed. It also has almost half the mass of the cutter, which is going to come into play later on when a ship's weight starts becoming more of an issue. Another thing that the Titan has going for it in terms of its performance is how its wings and chassis are shaped. This cross-section has a lot more of an aerodynamic quality, and its wings are going to act as a control surface that provides lift for the ship. So it's going to be able to glide through the air, while the cutter is going to have to rely on raw power to work its way through a planet's atmosphere. For weapons, the Titan has a single size 4 mount on the nose and two size 3 weapons on each of the wings. And for missiles, it has two customizable racks that by default come with two size 2 missiles each. And these racks can be swapped out for ones that can hold a single size 3 missile or four size 1s. There's nothing preventing you from mixing and matching different size racks. The Titan also has a couple of advantages when it comes to its components loadout. It has one more size 1 cooler, and it also has one more size 1 shield than the Cutter has. Its flight deck also has a few features that I really like. One of them is the ability to enter and exit the Titan right from the pilot seat. Or you can choose to spin your chair around and go directly into the hab section of the ship. I like having this alternative way of entering the Titan because it lets me get into it without having to lower the ramp to the cargo bay like you do with a lot of the other ships. And the reason why I don't like having that as my only option is people will often try to sneak aboard your ship, and the ramp only access ships are the easiest ones for people to stealth their way onto. Also having direct access to the pilot seat allows you to get going a lot faster than you would if you had to enter into the back of the ship and travel all the way through it to get to the flight deck. It's a feature that I wish a lot of the other ships had. The only real downside to the Titan is that the only amenity that it has is a bed. The good news is that amenities aren't nearly as important as they used to be, which means that you're just going to have to be a little more diligent when it comes to making sure that your ship is supplied with food and water before you take off, and you're going to have to make sure that you hit the showers after you come back home. So let's see how the Titan compares to Drake's newest addition to the starter ship lineup. Drake has developed a reputation for creating ships that are low in quality but highly rated when it comes to their over-the-top firepower. And the Cutter is not your traditional Drake ship. It has an uncharacteristically weak weapon selection when compared to the other starter ships. And weirdly enough, it comes with a lot more options. Which is also not a very typical Drake thing. And the Avenger may be better when it comes to its speed and handling, but the Cutter is something that the Avenger doesn't. Its main engines are VTOL capable, which means that they can swing down just like it was a mini Cutlass. This is going to let it hover in place for long periods of time without having to worry about overheating, 
and it's going to be a lot more stable when traveling through an atmosphere at low speeds or through hazardous weather conditions. It's also going to provide that much needed extra boost that you're going to want to have when trying to take off from locations that have an unusually heavy gravity field. And the only real drawback to its handling is that it can feel fast when you're traveling in a straight line, but as soon as you try and hit a turn you'll really start to feel the weight of the ship holding it back. And as you can see it's not the most aerodynamic ship, but it's going to be able to brute force its way through a lot of environmental hazards that the other ships won't be able to handle. The cutter's interior is divided up into three sections, the flight deck, the hab, and the cargo bay. The flight deck is where you'll find the pilot seat and several small components lockers where the life support and avionics are kept. There's also a weapons rack that's mounted onto the wall, which could technically be considered to be Drake's one and only safety feature. After you sit down, the pilot seat will spin around and face forward, but it'll also hoist you up into the air and ease you onto a platform like you're on some kind of carnival ride that's about to take off. The whole effect makes me feel like I'm flying around in a mini-sub that could have come right out of the pages of a Jules Verne novel, and I really like it for those reasons. The Titan may have the advantage when it comes to its offensive capabilities, but the Cutter has the advantage when it comes to amenities. And as I said before, this is a rather odd situation for a Drake ship to be in, because the Cutter offers a number of quality of life features for your character, and Drake ships aren't really known for that. It has a combination shower bathroom, a bed and a storage locker, and it has shelving that lets you store additional items in a more physicalized way. While the Avenger only has a bed. Now, as I said before, amenities have been downgraded from necessities to being luxuries. But like I also said in the Cutter Black vs. C1 video, I'd rather have them than not have them. And the Cutter was built with these features in mind, so they've been purposely integrated into the ship design in a way that takes up very little space. The Cutter does have a few more advantages over the Avenger. Like for instance, it has significantly more hit points than the Titan does. The Cutter also has a lot higher hydrogen and quantum fuel capacity than the Titan, which is going to make it a lot better explorer and overall daily driver. You should keep in mind that these stats are all placeholders for the time being while certain aspects of the game are being worked on, but most of them are intended to be indicative of certain traits that a ship is supposed to have which are going to be reflected in its stats. The ship's cargo bay is dedicated to storing a series of components. It has a small cargo grid and it can be used to carry a modestly sized vehicle or more boxes. The cutter can place four SEUs of cargo onto its grid, but you can put a lot more in the hold if you're not too worried about traveling around with unsecured cargo. Now, I managed to get two 8 SEU boxes inside of it, so you could easily push its max limit up to 16 SEUs of cargo, which is double what the Titan can carry. That also means that this ship can end up being a very effective loot goblin. And just like with the Titan, it carries all of its cargo internally. When it comes to vehicle transport, the cutter may have less space to spare for transporting vehicles, but its capacity is very close to the Avengers. You're just going to have to be a little more picky when it comes to choosing a ground vehicle. It can't carry every one of the Gravlev bikes, but it can easily carry an X1. It can also carry a Nox if you park it at an angle. The Dragonfly ironically doesn't fit, but in the future the Dragonfly should have a compact mode, and maybe after that's been implemented you'll be able to transport it, but for now it just hangs too much outside the ramp. And if you close it while it's like this, there's a 50-50 chance that something very bad will happen to both the Dragonfly and the Cutter. You can also use the Cutter to transport any of the smaller wheeled vehicles like the PTV, the STV, or the Ranger. And of course you can get a pulse into it. So what does the Cutter do that the Avenger can't? And the answer to that is this ship is going to save you a lot of money in the long run. When I was playtesting it, I spent most of my time looting outposts, raiding bunkers, doing risky delivery missions, and raiding the contents of every loot crate that I came across. Basically I was doing a lot of delivery missions and FPS combat. Bunkers were the best suppliers of weapons, armor, and gear that I'd bring back and sell in bulk which really helped to supplement my income. I also noticed I was doing very little ship-to-ship -ship combat. The cutter is not built for fighting, so I found myself avoiding it whenever I could. And as a result, I wasn't wasting money on resupplying my ship with ammunition or missiles, and I wasn't constantly repairing the damage that was being done to my hull after every mission. And that's not even taking into account how much it costs to refit your ship with new components and weapons you'd need to stay competitive in combat and how devastating that would be monetarily if your ship gets destroyed. And I was taking all the money that I wasn't spending on resupply needs and was putting it towards getting my next ship. So when it comes to time versus effort, I was saving a lot of money doing things this way. And the first goal that I set for myself was purchasing a second ship, and the cutter was helping me achieve that goal a lot faster than I thought I would. The whole experience made me realize how much less it cost for me to maintain the cutter in contrast to the Avenger. And I found that sticking to doing FPS missions and risky cargo runs were paying out more than the low-tiered combat missions were, especially when you factor in the amount of money that I was getting from looting and selling the stuff that I brought back with me. 
And I wasn't being forced to put any of that money back into my ship. So why can't you just do that with the Avenger? And the answer is that the Cutter isn't as good at doing ship-to-ship -ship combat, which means that I wasn't doing it. So that took me out of that loop entirely, and that's the point. As soon as you start engaging in ship-to-ship -ship combat, you put yourself back into that loop and negate all the benefits that you get from avoiding it. And if you buy the Titan and don't use it for the things that it's better at, then you're just paying extra money for features that you're not using. And if that's the case, then why not stick with a cutter, which is cheaper and has a lot better range, fuel economy, durability, player options, and longevity in the field. It was essentially built for that kind of playstyle, so it's going to be better at it. Another thing that I have to bring up is this price. I don't normally talk about the pledge store prices for these ships, mainly because I try to approach things from the perspective of buying ships in-game using the in-game currency. But in this case, I have to make an exception. Because a large factor when it comes to buying a starter ship is its affordability. And the Cutter is the third least expensive starter ship that a player could buy from the pledge store. And then if you match that against all the features that it has, I'd say that for the money, this is the best ship that you could get. The only real downside to the Cutter is when you compare it to the other starter ships, it tends to be one of the weakest when it comes to its combat skills. And it's going to struggle when you're trying to do any of those kinds of missions. So Cutter owners are going to want to focus more on doing transport, retrieval, and missions that have a focus on FPS combat. So does the Cutter knock the Titan off its throne? Well, yes and no. To be more specific, it will, but only for some people. A very common theme with Star Citizen is providing two ships in any one particular category that were designed to be direct competitors with each other. And one of those options will be more combat oriented, while the other one would be more utilitarian or industrial in nature. And that's exactly what you have here. When it comes to starter ships, if you just want to get into the game for the least amount of money, then I'd suggest picking either the Aurora or the Mustang. But if you want the most value while getting something that's still relatively inexpensive, then I'd look at the Cutter or the Titan. What the Cutter provides is an alternative choice for players who aren't as interested in doing ship-based combat and are more into min-maxing their starting situation so that they can get the most out of the time that they're playing. It's for people who are looking to get something that's more of an explorer and a daily driver. It's a lot more durable, it has a lot longer range than the Titan, and it has onboard facilities that can provide for your character's needs in terms of hygiene and physicalized storage which means that you're going to be able to spend more time in the field and have to make less trips back to your home base. It's the perfect ship for doing play at your own pace types of jobs, or as a staging ground for missions that mainly focus on FPS combat. Plus, as I stated before, it's hands down the best purchase to make for the price versus what you get for your money. And the gameplay style that it caters to is going to be a lot more efficient when it comes to earning money and being able to hold on to it, which is something that's going to be incredibly important when you're just starting out in the game. But if you want more of a visceral experience that allows you to do more ship-to-ship -ship combat right from the start without having to upgrade to a dedicated fighter, then I'd still recommend the Titan. This ship is able to do all the missions that the Cutter can, and on top of that, it's also able to do escort and defense missions, as well as some low to medium level bounty hunting. So this ship is going to be able to do a wider range of things, but that versatility comes at the expense of durability, its fuel economy, range, and a lack of amenities. And it's going to be a little more expensive to buy. And that's going to be it for this video. I've been your host, Law of the West. Thanks for watching, and take care.